Hello judges, I'm Hong and I'm here with two of my teammates, Guan and Dick Ming. Um, in this presentation, I'll be talking about our study on producing high-yield cordyceps military strains using a method called acid spore hybridization, and I'm very excited to share, the, share this with you guys. So first of all, what is cordyceps militaris? Cordyceps militaris is a parasitic fungus that contains many useful properties, such as anti-inflammatory or anti-tumor, which is also the reason why it has been used very widely as medicine in East Asia for the past hundreds of years. However, this fungus is very expensive in its natural environment, and currently it is in danger, in danger of overharvesting. So naturally, there have been a lot of focus and, and a lot of research put into trying to mass produce as well as improve the strain quality of this fungus. So with all that said, uh, there are so many problems that we need to address. For example, in mass production, there is this main problem, which is strain degeneration. This problem would ultimately decrease the quality of the strain, and this is something that we really need to solve. This problem may have arised from the standard cultivation method that we're, we're currently using right now. And this method consists of mating the strains at random to produce new strains. This is um, not really specific and there isn't really a method for this, which is randomized. So there are a few reasons why we'd like to do this project. Firstly, aside from it being very interesting, it has economic and medicinal value. It is very relevant to consumer needs. And we think that by doing this method and by conducting this study, we would be one step closer to trying to fix the strain degeneration problem that I mentioned earlier. So with all that said, we have two main objectives for this project. Firstly, we want to produce high yield and high quality corset military products and strains using the acid spore carbonization method. And this method would preferably be economically efficient. This is something that we'll touch upon later. And second objective is to evaluate whether this method has promise or not. And um, the main principle we use is heterosis. And this is a phenomenon when hybridizations between diverse varieties of a species exhibit greater characteristics than their parents. So for example, things like biomass or speed of development, or in our case, we'd like to improve the quality of the strain and the yield. So uh, using that principle, Basically, what we did was we identified the mating type genes of the parent strains, and mating type genes are basically the differences in the strains I was talking about. And after that, we can conduct a mating experiment and mate the ones with different mating types together, and um, theoretically, the hybridizations should be better than their parents. So second section I'm going to talk about is methodology. Step one, we obtain breeding bodies from breeding suppliers. Uh, one is from a Japanese source and one is from a Korean source to make sure that there are differences among the parent strains. Next, we can, can isolate the acid spores and culture them in liquid medium. Fourth step we did was to extract DNA from the mycelium and then we can perform PCR on the extracted DNA. This is to amplify the mating type genes which will make it easier to identify later. Sixth step is DNA electrophoresis. So, and this is considered to be the distinguishing step uh, from our method to the standard method. So this method is more selective, whereas the other one is more randomized. And at the end of the step, we have determined the mating type genes of the spores. And after we did that, we can start to hybridize the acid spores uh, with different mating types in brown rice medium for about two months. After those two months, we, we will be able to harvest the hybridizations and take average me measurements to properly evaluate. In terms of results, we have evaluated five successful hybridizations using four criteria, fresh fruiting body weight, fruiting body quantity per culture, fruiting body width, and fruiting body length. And in each chart, we have the uh, results for the parents and the, and the results for the hybridizations, so you can compare. So using these resources, there are a few main points I can make. Firstly, the two most outstanding hybridizations are the ones between G5 and G15, and G5 and H18, because they produce the highest fresh weight and have the longest fruiting bodies. So this means if we ever want to re replicate this process, can use these two outstanding strains to generate new strains with even better performance in the future. Secondly, the hybridizations are superior to the parent strains in two criteria, which mean that means that this method has effect. And last but not least, the strains we made are economically efficient as well. Using this table here, this table shows the cost breakdown if we were to produce the maximum number of hybridizations per batch considering our resources, and this would be 1,800 containers. And theoretically, if we were to sell all of, of our 1,800 containers using the market price, we would have a lot of profit, and this is profitable. So this means that this has commercial potential, and it has promise. In conclusion, we think that this, the, this project has promise because we created uh, successful hybrid strains and uh, things I mentioned earlier. 
for future works, uh, there are two main works that we think we can do. We can make a new study on fungi that have values, such as a biocorcepsinosis. And secondly, we can analyze the con concentration of corcepin within the fruiting body of this fungus and compare the differences among hybrid culture. That is the end, end of my presentation, and thank you for listening.